Hi guys, I'm Liam Berry. Welcome to Alcan ADV. Today we're going to talk about the second installment in a series that I've been doing on riding the Alcan, the Alaska Highway, and uh, different tips and ideas on how to plan, how to schedule, how to prepare for this. So anyway, we'll get into all of that right after this. So money is a bit of an issue going through Canada because you have the exchange rate. Now currently the exchange rate is something like, or last year it was something about 1.2, 1.3, something like that uh, Canadian to one American dollar, which is not terrible. You get a little bit more uh, Canadian than you had American. It tends to work out because the prices in Canada are slightly higher usually than, than they are in America. So value is, is approximately the same. Now when you're preparing for a trip uh, anywhere, a long distance trip, even in your own country you've got you've got basically three main categories. You've got food, lodging, and gas. And with those three things you can pretty much get by. Um, there are a couple of other things and we'll talk about that, but this this is the main stuff. So as far as Canada goes it's nothing different. Um, You've still got food. You have to figure out how you are willing to eat. Are you going to eat McDonald's? Are you going to go out to a real dinner every night? Are you going to uh, go to the grocery store and pick some cans up and you know make something by out out of camp? So figure out what you're going to do for food, how you're going to eat, and uh, and figure it all out in American money. Budget yourself what you think you can eat, what you can uh, budget for a day's eating, and then go and uh, multiply it by, I usually do like one and a half or something. You don't want to cut it real close. Just multiply it by like one and a half and see what you come up with. And that'll be your budget, daily food budget for in Canada. And that'll fluctuate obviously, but that's a place to start. And lodging, much the same way. Figure out what you're willing to do uh, as far as are you going to sleep in a hotel all the time? Are you going to camp? Um, try to find free campsites, which you can find some places on the Alcan. Um, anyway, figure out your your lodging budget, then add a bit to it. Add, you know, like 25%, 50%, something like that to it, and call that your daily lodging budget. Now, hotels in Canada, especially up up north. Um, they're not going to be usually quite as expensive and don't take this as law because it all depends on the hotel. Some they're a little bit smaller maybe it's a branded hotel but it's it's a small like a mom and pop owned um, branch of whatever chain and sometimes you can find a reasonable rate uh, but often the big name hotels are just as expensive if not more so so you got you got to be careful. Gas is a whole other story and uh, we're gonna get into that in a separate video because it's it's uh, it's complicated, but basically just figure out your budget, gas budget, however you would have been doing it in America and add like 100% to it at least because you do not want to be short on gas in the middle of the Alcan. Um, gas is incredibly expensive in Canada and we'll go into that later, but uh, I would definitely much rather be on the big side on the gas budget. So add 100%, add 150% maybe. Um, you want to be safe with that one. Then you have incidentals. And if you're going up the Alcan, you're probably going to want a few souvenirs from something. And of course, if you're on a motorcycle, they can't be big. So, you know, you got that going in your favor. Um, give yourself a hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, whatever you, you want uh, as far as a, a souvenir budget. But take into account, you're only going to be here for like a week on the way up and then a week on the way back. You're not going to, uh, you're not going on this huge expedition. The most of your time is going to be spent in Alaska probably, and there you can spend American money. So don't, uh, I wouldn't put too much pressure or emphasis on the souvenir budget. Just, you know, I had like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something that I, I decided I could buy a sticker or something for myself. And, uh, and that worked okay. And lastly, we're going to go into an emergency budget. And uh, this is one thing that I didn't do well enough in Canada on my trip, and I would definitely do a little different. So what I did is I had a Canadian budget, and I had everything all lined out, and then I had an American budget that was separate. 
And I had an emergency fund, a fairly large one, in my American budget, but I didn't in the Canadian. And as it turns out, I was going up through Canada and uh, my chain, I, didn't, I hadn't noticed it until I was in the middle of Canada, but it was in dire need of replacing. And I needed a couple other minor things, but the chain was the big one. Anyway, so I had to buy a new chain. A new chain was like, I don't know, 120 bucks or something like that. Parts are not cheap on the Alcan, got to remember that. And it really close to beat me in my Canadian budget. I was traveling with my mother and sister, and so we were eating together, we were uh, staying together a lot of places, and so that buoyed me up. And uh, if I hadn't been traveling with them, if I'd been traveling on my own, I probably would have ran out of Canadian money and probably had to use American money or try to find someone that would uh, exchange American for Canadian or something like that. Anyway, so this is one thing that I didn't think of when I was planning the trip, but definitely you need a Canadian emergency fund. And I would say get a thousand dollars of Canadian money and just set it aside as an emergency fund. Don't touch it. When you get back, you can cash it back in for American and uh, no harm done. But you want a good piece of cash. And uh, speaking of cash, I did not do a card through Canada. Um, I had a few other card things that I was doing in, in, uh, in the US for normal, normal money. But uh, through Canada, I was strictly cash. And this is why. Most credit cards will uh, alert you if you go down the Alcan. I say most. You can file a travel plan. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, but I have had issues and my family has had issues going up and down and I've done this a few times and there's never been some time that we don't have some problem with a card not working on the Alcan, be it in a grocery store, at a gas station, something. If you have cash, everybody takes cash. So what I would do is do everything with cash through Canada. And it, they make it hard because they have all this change and got the loonies and the toonies and the, all the different little uh, because they don't have ones and, and different stuff. But anyway, pay with cash through Canada. When you get to America, do whatever you want. So once you have your budget, daily budget, then stretch it out over the length of number of days that you're gonna be in Canada and, uh, and then add to it. You do not want to be stuck in Canada with not enough money to get out of Canada. And so uh, I would say add 20%, add, add something to it uh, to where you are over, way over your intended spending. And uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like budgeting for any other um, road trip that you are taking. And of course, this doesn't cover your budget um, getting to the Alcan or getting to Canada and then your budget up in Alaska while you're doing that. But you should be able to know um, how to do that. And if you don't, I have a video that I did before the trip uh, explaining how I was budgeting for that and that seemed to work fairly well. I had a, a good uh, chunk of change left over when I got back so that was that was good I guess you know no harm done and uh, so go ahead and check that out actually I'll put a link to that uh, down in the description if you want to check that out also there's a few other guys that I learned from here on YouTube um, that have excellent videos on travel budgets and, and different tips and tricks for saving money uh, while you're on the road so go ahead and check them out uh, 40 times around living off the slab um, there's a few other a few other channels but those are the big ones that I have learned a lot from anyway so hopefully this gives you uh, at least an idea of uh, what's involved in planning a trip through Canada and really it's not that complicated it's uh, it's basically like planning any other trip with just a little bit of twists and turns in there just thrown in because it's a different country anyway if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write me. My email's in the description. And uh, other than that, write a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, you guys ride safe. And we'll see you next week with another episode of something to do with the same stuff. So stay tuned for that. And you guys take care. Okay, hi guys. A little side note here. Um, for this year, I'm changing uh, my upload schedule. So I've been uploading or trying to upload on Mondays. And I know uh, for the winter, a lot of times that's been kind of a, a flop, but uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, change to Tuesdays uh, for my regular upload, and uh, that should work a little better with my schedule, and I should be able to keep that uh, a lot better. So here's your notice, uh, and if you don't catch this, you'll notice because videos are gonna go up on Tuesday now instead of Monday, so. 
see you. It's going to be about money, and uh, money is a big problem. Uh, well, big money is a big problem. 